Most anglers think adding ice to their live well keeps bass alive longer, but does it? And if so, how much works best? A just released study aims to answer that question, and the results probably aren't what you expect. So a brand new study just released this month in May of 2025 took a look at how bass react to being in live wells when the temperature changes. There have been a lot of live well studies out there, but in almost all of those, they just set a certain temperature and then change the other variables, the amount of oxygen and flow and stuff like that, and see how the bass react. Well, in the real world, the water warms during the day. A lot of times it, it warms up. Sometimes it stays the same if it's a gray day in the spring or the fall. And then sometimes we add ice to the water to help cool it down. But do we put ice in just one time or do we keep on adding ice during the day? So basically what this research aimed to answer was what happens to bass in live wells when the temperature changes and adding ice, is it good or bad? And if so, how much? So to test this, they actually did it in two parts. And the first was actual real world test. They wanted to see what happens to the temperature in live wells of bass boats compared to lake temperature. They did it on three tournaments on Clinton Lake in Illinois. One was in May, one in June, and one in October. And they took, I believe, 10 boats in each of the tournaments, and they put a temperature probe in the live well of the boats, and then another probe that was testing the actual surface temperature. As you probably guessed, the temperature in the live wells of the boats really varied a lot. Some anglers added ice, so the temperature in theirs would uh, start warm and then get cooler. In other ones, it would just steadily warm all day as the water temp rose. And in other ones, they were putting in ice periodically during the day, so the temperature would, would be steady and then climb as the ice melted, then drop again as they added more, kept on going up and down. Now, once they got the data from the boat live wells, they tried to replicate that in a lab, in a more controlled situation, and they set up tests with different temperatures. So in the lab, they took 50 bass and they broke them into separate groups and tested them, and they tried to replicate tournament conditions. And this always gives me a little bit of a giggle, just how they replicate uh, fishing and uh, the whole tournament thing. But anyway, they, they put these fish in an aquarium and they basically chased around the fish until it was tired. So that was supposed to replicate being caught, which I can understand, you know, in a spinning rod, you fight him for a long time. So they tried to put that, the, the fish is tired. And then they held him out of the water for 60 seconds to kind of replicate, all right, you're taking the hook out and everything by the end, you, you, you weigh him and put your cull tag on. So that was basically to replicate uh, putting him into the live well. So it's important to note that they use a baseline temperature of 68 degrees. That was kind of the control and stuff would go up and down from there. Uh, they broke them into six groups and the, the first group was the resting group. And this is basically control. These fish didn't get chased around. They were just fish that didn't get caught, basically what you'd equate to them to see what they did. And they were not placed in a live well either. They were just allowed to swim in a large aquarium, not chased around or anything, held at 68 degrees the whole time. Now the second group is what they call the exercise group. They were stressed like they were caught, but immediately released. They were not held six to seven hours in the live well. They were kept at 68 degrees as well. Then there was the ambient group. Now they were stressed, held for six to seven hours and at a constant temperature of 68. So their temperature never changed. You had the increasing group, which would be someone not adding any ice and on a warming day, you know, your live well keeps on pumping in warmer and warmer water as a day if it warms up. And their temperature was increased gradually during the course of the day from 68 degrees up to 86 degrees. And they saw that jump in uh, actually one of the boats at the tournaments. So they wanted to give kind of that max rising case. So they had two other groups that tried to replicate adding ice. The first one they called oscillating. So they stressed the fish like he was caught. They held them for six to seven hours. And then the water temperature every couple of hours oscillated from 68 degrees up to 77, add ice, drops back to 68. So they let it keep on going up and down like someone was adding a little bit of ice every couple hours. And then the final test case was what they called the ice group. And these ones were to replicate if a fish were caught early, you dump in ice right away. And then during the course of the day, you don't add any more ice and it slowly warms back up to 68 degrees. Now in this test, they control the oxygen levels so that didn't fluctuate. And that, like I said, they, they changed the temperatures and held them in totes, replicated a live well and held them for six to seven hours. After they were done, they tested the fish both with blood work and also motor skills to see how they responded to that captivity. 
Now the reflex test, as they call them, and, the, and they gave them a score. Uh, and these, again, these are kind of interesting how they test a bass's reflex, like the startle response. They pinch the tail and does the fish swim away? And then they did other things about uh, kind of flexing the body and, che and checking the eye movement and stuff. Basically, they want to see, does the fish look the same or not? And then at the end of the six to seven hour period, they also pulled blood from the fish and tested it for stress indicators. There was cortisol, which is a stress hormone, uh, glucose and lactate that shows energy use and anaerobic stress, uh, sodium and potassium, and then also some protein. So it, they did a pretty a wide blood panel on them to see how these fish responded to the different conditions. So the first takeaway they found was on that those reflex tests, and when you looked at the fish, how you saw them swim, there was not a meaningful difference in any of the fish, whether you raised the temperature, lowered it, didn't uh, even mess with them. All the fish looked like they were healthy and strong swimmers looked fine. So even the ones that were stressed, you really couldn't spot it. Now, once you get into the blood work, you do see a lot of differences. So the exercise only group, and that's the one that, again, they chased him around, but didn't put him in the live well. They wanted to see what just fighting the fish, what's that gonna do to their blood levels? Now, these ones showed elevated potassium, sodium, and lactate, basically signs of exertion and, and stress from being caught. So with the rest of the fish, there were some pretty significant differences. And which one do you think worked out best? Which one right now would you go with to treat your live well? And based on the data, the one that was the clear winner was actually the ambient. The one where you did nothing, where the water temperature stayed at a static level, stayed at 68 the whole time. Those fish... Uh, had the very best recovery. All their potassium, sodium, glucose, lactate, protein, all pretty much returned to normal levels after the six hour period. So they were back to normal after being caught and held in the live well. Now, as you can probably guess, the ones that started out at 68 and went up to 86, they were worse off. They didn't do as well. So their glucose levels doubled, it meant they were burning a lot more energy. Sodium levels dropped, protein levels uh, dropped, Basically, they were showing signs of a lot of stress. Now, here's where it takes a turn that I think is kind of surprising. The oscillating fish, the ones where the guys added ice every two hours, let it go from 68 up to 77, add ice, and it kept going up and down. These were the worst off fish. Researchers noted that their glucose and lactate levels were very, very high, and their potassium was elevated while their sodium dropped. So they're showing signs of stress and physical imbalance. Basically, the researchers noted that the constant cooling and warming kept the bass from really recovering in the live well at all. Now, adding ice at the very beginning when it was caught, taking that 68 degree water and cooling it and letting it rise back to the normal 68 by the end of the day, those fish did the second best. Not as well as the ones that stayed at 68, but they did much better than the ones that had the warming all day or the ones that were going up and down the whole day. So with them, their sodium levels were still low but their other stress indicators of potassium, glucose, lactate, and protein all returned to normal. So the thing you should note about this though, they let that water temperature rise from that low temperature in the 50s up to 68 within one hour. So basically they spent five to six of their hours of the total six to seven at that ambient temperature again. So basically in that first hour when it's changing, they're not doing a recovery, when it stayed level is probably when they got the recovery. So the researchers had some takeaways, and then after that, I have some takeaways as well, because I think some of this begs the question of we need to test a few more things. So the researchers first pointed out the fact that obviously in bass boats, temperature based on the day and based on the design of the boat itself, how much the sun's beating down or not, definitely impacts the temperature. And future research needs to take that into account because it's not a static temperature. It can move around quite a bit during the course of a day. Now the researchers recommended, based on these results, if you can keep the water temperature static during the day, not increase it or decrease it, and try to match the temperature of the lake, that's best for the bass. Obviously, the changing of it was the hardest on them, and trying to keep it close to what the original temperature is would be the best. And then they noted at the end as well that obviously temperature, this is one more thing that causes a stressor, but they're put in a confined space. It's one thing if one fish is sitting in a live well, but if you put five big ones crammed into a live well, there's that stress there. And then obviously as temperature changes, they kept the oxygen level the same, but oxygen level goes up and down, especially in the warmer months. So that can add stress as well. 
And then keep in mind as well, this was not a delayed mortality study. This was just checking the bass once you pull them out of the live well at the very end. And whether they were, uh, you know, elevated stress or not, it was interesting to see that the ones that were just resting in the live well at the ambient temperatures had returned to normal levels, pretty much had returned to like they hadn't even been caught. So based on the research, here are a couple of my thoughts. And the first being that this is at 68 degrees, which is good. And if you live in a more Midwestern, Northeast type climate, that's probably a summertime temperature a lot of times, maybe you start the day with, not in August, but like our Southern tournaments. And, and even once we get into May, the water temperatures are already in the 70s, first thing in the morning and higher. Obviously we struggle with dissolved oxygen in the live wells by then. My question is, what's the offset? And I think we need additional research because once you start getting that 75, 80 degree water temperature first thing in the morning, do you really want to keep it at 80 all day? If I put five big fish, and especially if I have a co-angler and we have 10 pretty good sized fish in the same live well, I mean, is that water at 80 degrees going to be able to hold enough oxygen for five big fish? Is it not better to cool it down at the beginning? And maybe even if they get the shock of having to deal with the cooler water, do they need that? Uh, obviously summertime tournaments are more of a stressor. And then the other thing, I think, you know, it's so easy now to get digital thermometers, meat thermometers and stuff. We have so many gadgets on our boat and you can actually get temperature probes for your live well and put them on your, on your graphs or get a small display on your dash. Kind of based on this, I think that we probably do need to pay more temperature, more attention to the temperature of our live wells going forward. Even if you're not adding ice, uh, you know, trying to cool it down, you definitely need to pay attention. If it's a warm, sunny day and the sun's really beating down on those lids and it's starting to warm them up some, I mean, that's not good. Obviously that's a stress. And then if it's going up and down with the add the ice, you know, if it's gonna warm up during the middle of the day, you probably have to add some ice to keep it at that ambient temperature. You know, they kept it in the lab at 68. In your boat in uh, on a warm June day, it's not gonna stay at 68, it's gonna warm up. So you're gonna to have to add some ice to keep it there at that 68 or whatever that static temperature is. So I think there's definitely a call for more research here, see how oxygen and temperature interplay, because obviously there's gonna be some sort of a threshold on those warm days that once, I mean, 90 degree water, yeah, maybe that static temperature is, is better. They don't have to adjust to it, but I guarantee you two 30 pound bags in 90 degree water is not gonna turn out very well. Let me know your thoughts on it. Interesting research. The more we know, the better we can understand it. But I think there's definitely uh, some questions that get raised here that we're really going to need to know before we can finally decide what to do with our bass, especially in the summertime.